Hi friends. Today we are going to discuss about one of the important topic from um, paper first, and that is middle year. It is a question for uh, ten marks, and it is very interesting topic. We know friends, our year is divided into three parts. One is external year, second one is middle year. and third one is in the year so external year helps to conduct the sound up to the tympanic membrane from the tympanic membrane to the inner ear you can say labyrinth the passage which is helping to conduct the sound composed of the ossicles and that is called as middle ear this is the space middle ear is a space Which is of a cuboidal shape. Do you know cube? It is of a cuboidal shape. I mean to say, the lateral and the medial wall of the ear is concave, so that the front, you, I mean to say, anterior and the posterior walls, they are also becoming like this. The dimension of anterior wall or length of anterior wall at the upper portion is. Six mm at the middle, it is two mm, and at the bottom, it is four mm. Now, at the lateral side of the middle ear, there is a membrane. There is a membrane, and that is called as tympanic membrane. Means this external ear get communicated with the middle ear by means of a membrane that is called as tympanic membrane. I, we will we will talk in next class about the tympanic membrane. Now this is the structure of middle ear. The portion which is in the line of middle ear, it is one part, and the portion which is above the uh, tympanic membrane, portion with the tympanic membrane, and portion above the tympanic membrane. This is called as tympanic area proper, and this is called as epitympanic recess. This one is epitympanic recess. These both are the parts of middle ear. Now about the walls of the middle ear. Middle ear consists of six walls total. Um, those are anterior wall, posterior wall, roof, floor, lateral wall, and medial. Anterior wall, posterior wall, roof, floor, lateral wall, and medial wall. So these are the walls of middle ear. These all walls are made up of a thin bone. These thin bones are working as a partition between different structures and the middle ear. Means, suppose. Anteriorly, there is an artery, carotid artery. At the inferior side, or you can say at the roof, there is jugular vein. So these structures are separated from the middle ear by means of these partitions, and those are called as walls of the middle ear. Now there are six partitions. Among six. the partition which is toward the anterior side you can call it as anterior wall or the carotid wall because it is a partition between the middle ear and the carotid artery now the next in the same sense the posterior the posterior wall which is toward the posterior side the posterior wall is also known as mystoid wall because it is working as a partition between the mystoid process the mystoid process and the middle ear now third you 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 proceed with the uh, with the with the roof the roof of the middle ear it is helping to work as a partition between the brain and the ear so it is called as tegmental wall it is called as tegmental wall whereas the floor of the middle ear which is working 
as a partition between the ear and the jugular vein internal jugular vein it is either called as floor or you can say it as a jugular wall now the remaining two one is lateral and one is medial the lateral wall we know it helps to communicate the external ear or it is a partition between the middle ear and the external ear and it has a tympanic membrane so this lateral wall is termed as lateral wall or the membranous wall and lastly the medial wall the medial wall is working as a partition between inner ear and the middle ear inner ear and the middle ear and, and we know the inner ear is known as labyrinth the inner ear is known as labyrinth so this is the wall which is known as labyrinthic wall so these are the six walls of the middle ear one is anterior wall it is also called as carotid wall when it's posterior wall it is also called as mestroid wall when is roof it is also called as tegmental wall when is floor it is also called as jugular wall when is lateral wall it is also called as membranous wall and when is medial wall it is also known as labyrinthic wall so these are the six walls of the middle ear which is of cuboidal shape now this middle ear at it is a cuboidal separate box it mean and one thing we are knowing that it it is having communication with the uh, with the um, you can say external ear and inner ear one more thing it has communication with the pharynx and with the mastoid process it has communication with the pharynx and with the mastoid process one extra more thing is that a nerve seventh cranial nerve that is facial nerve a seventh cr cranial nerve taking its origin from brain stem is supposed to travel through the middle ear supposed to travel through the middle ear by its own path with its own canal that is also present in the middle ear one thing second thing the middle ear consists of ossicles which are working with a vibration to conduct the sound which is bombarding on the tympanic membrane to the inner ear so these ossicles they are communicated with each other and lastly it is firm and supposed to communicate the last ossicle of the middle ear with the inner ear so there is need of some opening to communication and these are all the openings of the middle ear and let's start with one by one middle ear is supposed to communicate supposed to communicate with the inner ear one thing and with the mastoid no doubt there is also a communication with the with the with the nasopharynx so this posterior medial wall this medial wall of the middle ear this medial wall of the middle ear showing three things showing three things one is promontory promotion one is promontory to remember you can remem remember you can uh, keep the keep in mind the word promotion and there are two fenestri there are one is promontory and there are two fenestri one is fenestra vestibuli and second one is fenestra cochlei it is simple the vestibuli consider the vestibule of the inner ear cochlei consider the cochlea of inner ear yeah so these are the openings these are the openings at the at the medial wall and these openings among these openings one opening is of oval shape and second one is of round shape the opening for vestibule the opening for vestibule is of oval shape whereas 
the opening for cochlea is of is of round shape there is a round window and what is promontory we know friends the cochlea having two and half circles yeah cochlea is having two and half circles the center portion of the cochlea which is projecting and which is just pressing over pressing over which wall the medial wall of middle ear this is cochlea this is medial wall of middle ear it is pressing over and this pressure or this impression leads to cause a bulging and that bulging is called as promontory so medial wall consists three main parts are showing three main impressions one is impression due to the bulging of cochlea that is called as promontory one opening which is of oval shape for communication of the bone stapedius the bone stapedius with the inner ear and that is called as fenestra vestibuli and third one is a round opening that is called as fenestra cochlei so these are three openings at the medial wall now what about the posterior wall we are knowing that this posterior wall is also known as mastoid wall is also known as mastoid wall so the mastoid process the mastoid process contains mastoid air cells which are at the epitympanic portion of the middle ear at the level of epitympanic portion of the middle ear and there is need of communication between the middle ear and the mastoid process this communication by means of a channel by means of a way and that way is called as Auditus to antrum. What is auditorium? We are yeah we are we are taking that drama and we are we are having gathering. That is auditorium. Yeah, not tigra. That is auditorium. And in the auditorium we are having the entry portion. Good many times it is served with the red carpet. So to remember the name. To remember the name. of that you are you are supposed to remember this entry to auditorium that is antrum to mastoid auditorium this is the antrum to the mastoid auditorium now second one is do you know uh, yes you are knowing that there are three ossicles of the middle ear Three ossicles of the middle ear. Those three ossicles are we will we will uh, we will talk later, but uh, just for the reference, those three ossicles are one is meris, one is step incus, and third one is steps. So this meris, incus, and step is so for the incus for the second ossicle, there is a fossa that is known as for whom the fossa is for incus. so in a sweet language we can use the term incudis yeah incudis the name is incus and we are saying incudis so the fossa for incus is fossa incudis this is the fossa incudis and there is one more thing there is a pyramid there is one more thing that is the pyramid so the structures and the posterior wall are number 1 the um, retus to uh, mastoid antrum number second incudial fossa and number third the pyramid so these are the structures we know there is a tympanic membrane and for that and towards the malus there is one muscle that is tympanic muscle tensor tympanic muscle so this tensor tympanic muscle is running like this and should have a origin for that purpose anterior fall having a small canal having a small canal for this tensor tympanic muscle now about the muscles of inner ear 
sorry, muscles of middle ear. So the muscles of middle ear are two. There are two muscles in the middle ear. One muscle is tensor tympani muscle and second one is stapedius muscle. No, no friends, the name itself indicates the tensor tympani. Tensor means to tense, to tense, to whom? The tympanic membrane. To tense the tympanic membrane, there is a muscle that is called as tensor tympanic muscle. And second one is stapedius. We know there are three ossicles, malus, incus and stapes. So for the stapes, so that stapes can get well fitted without any movement. It can remain in a stable position. And for that purpose, there is one muscle for the stapetes, for the stapes bone or ossicle that is called as stapetes muscle. So these are two muscles, one is tensor tympani and one is stapetes muscle in the middle ear. Now the next one is ossicles of middle ear. Middle ear consists of three ossicles from lateral to medial from lateral to medial, they are malus, incus and stapes. Malus is towards malus is towards the tympanic membrane or you can say lateral wall. Whereas incus is towards the medial wall. And in between these two, sorry, stapes is towards the medial wall and malus is towards the lateral wall. And in between these two, there is a bone or there is a ossicle that is incus. Malus has its head, neck, long process, short process and the handle. Now, this is the tympanic membrane. The head of malus remains little up and the handle of the malus, handle of the malus reaches at the center of tympanic membrane and adheres there so that the tympanic membrane can get well stressed and in addition the tensor tympanic muscle it is also inserted at this portion and also helps to tense the tympanic membrane so this is one now the head of malus head of malus get articulated get articulated with the incus Head of malus get articulated with the incus and incus get articulated with the stapes bone. The stapes is a bone which is having a foot plate of oval shape. Foot plate of oval shape with two limbs. One is short limb and one long limb. And this foot plate which is of oval shape getting attachment with the fenestra vestibulo oblique or it is getting fitted at the fenestra vestibuli and now there is communication between the middle ear and the inner ear now from this discussion we come to know that these three ossicles they are forming two joints they are forming two joints one joint between malus and incus and second joint between incus and stapes now there is much importance to the malus and the stapes incus is remaining middle so that bored incus requested no then my first name must be there in the joints so the joints between the ossicles are Enkido medullar joint. Enkido, a seat of incus. Enkido medullar joint. And the second one is Enkido stapedial joint. Enkido stapedial joint is there. And one is Enkido medullar joint. So these are the ossicles of the middle ear. And now we will proceed with the blood supply, nerve supply and the epidural anatomy. So arterial supply, middle ear is supplied by anterior, posterior
posterior, superior and inferior tympanic arteries and it is innervated by glossopharyngeal nerve. About the epiloid anatomy, the main epiloid anatomy of the middle ear is otitis media. Infection of the middle ear. This is otitis media. And this otitis media should be treated as early as possible. Rather, if the infection spread, it may damage to the tympanic membrane and even it may damage to the walls of the ear. Thanks for observing the video and hope you enjoyed the video well. In the next class, we will proceed with uh, another topic of anatomy.